Welcome to Think Tech on OC16, Hawaii's weekly newscast on things that matter to tech and to Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. In our show this time, we'll visit the Aquaponic Products Conference presented by the State Department of Agriculture at Kapiolani Community College. Chef Alan Wong and the students and faculty at the KCC Culinary Art Program prepared delicious gourmet dishes for us using local aquaponics products. Aquaponics is a relatively new farming method for sustainable food production. Hawaii is an aquaponics hotspot in the U.S. with eight commercial aquaponics farms on Oahu and more coming. The Department of Agriculture wants to help commercial aquaponics farmers enter the mainstream market in the thought that this will help with local food production and improve food self-sufficiency for Hawaii. A hundred buyers from supermarkets, food distribution, and restaurant organizations were invited to taste gourmet dishes prepared by famed chef Alan Wong and KCC students and instructors using local aquaponics products. Aquaponics farmers supplied high-quality tilapia and a variety of healthy, fresh greens. They made presentations about their farms and products. Buyers and farmers got to know each other through the presentations and tastings. It was a great opportunity for networking. We're invited by the State Department, and it's more of a curiosity because I heard a lot about it. Well, I just look at, you know, exactly what kind of volume they're talking about, um, what kind of cost they're talking about, you know, something that may make it more viable for us to, to carry it. Uh, well, right now, we have about 65,000 small tilapia at the farm, so it's a, we can produce a lot, so it's just a matter of finding people to buy them. So. Well, we do large grow out, and we do um, chili peppers and leaf collar, so. We have a two-acre parcel, and right now we've built about one, a little over one acre. We have 20 growing troughs with seven fish tanks, and then we recycle the water 24-7. Um, after the fish, with the fish waste, we run it through a vortex filter, and then through gravity feed, it feeds 20 growing troughs. We have over 100,000 gallons of water in our system, and we never have to add water. We're growing four different types of lettuce right now, uh, Manoa lettuce, mini romaine, Roxai and Panis, as well as our baby seedling uh, trays of um, elegance mix. There were a variety of industry players and supporters there, including Whole Foods, Don Quixote, Zippies, Armstrong Produce, Manson Products, Y Fukunaga Products, Hyatt Hotel, Prince Hotel, Uncle Bo's Restaurant, Time Supermarket, Nordstrom Cafe, and Ulupono Initiative. You are here because you love Hawaii. You want to support our farmers. And this is the key of Hawaii's future. You want to see a brighter, more prosperous future for Hawaii, for your children, for generations to come. And we, my boss Todd Lowe and myself, at Aqua Couch and Livestock Support Services, and our aquatic vet, Dr. Lee Yamasaki, are here to assist our farmers to go to the next level. Presentations were made by the buyers and farmers, including Hapa Farms, Iili Farms, Kunia Country Farms, Marine Agrifuture, Mary's Gardens, Nalolicious Farms, Olamana Gardens, Hawaii Fish Company, Kualoa Ranch, Makaha Farm, Paradise Shrimp Farm, and Allen Wong. They are all important to aquaponics and to our future. Right now we have about 8,000 tilapia fish and they'll be ready for the market in September of this year. And we plan to grow it to about two pounds. <clears throat> Our projected goal for two, uh, 2014 is 50,000 pounds. Next year 150,000 and in 2016 200,000 pounds. <laughs> So first of all, we choose the one crop is called sea asparagus. First of all, sea asparagus have a different name. In the mainland people, they call it sea bean. Uh, I like to call sea asparagus because it looks like a mini asparagus that tastes like the sea. Uh, this company formed in 2006, uh, and it started in uh, Kahuku, one acre. 
And we do one acre for five years. We use this one acre to establish the culture system and then open the market and do it pretty good. And then this year, uh, last year, we opened uh, another 15 acre. So we sit on about 18 acres in the middle of the uh, Mililani, right adjacent to residential homes. So I think that's really interesting that you can farm. I mean, I'm talking like 50 feet away from residential homes. Uh, go ahead. So this is an aquaponic system. I won't bore you with it, but um, basically what Todd was saying, the fish produce ammonia um, and nitrosomous bacteria break it down to nitrate and then the next nitrifying bacteria take it, uh, breaks it down to nitrite, then a second bacteria takes it to nitrate, which is then usable by the plants. Um, and so what we have now is a symbiotic relationship between plant and fish life and it's it was really intriguing when we started doing this. I, I got carried away and built this one acre farm. We are champions of CEA, Controlled Environment Agriculture. If you go to a website, University of Arizona, they really, they, they are kind of the poster child of it. And that's what aquaponics is. It's controlled environment. Now what I see coming up in the future and what Olamana Gardens does is we're championing going to the salt water. My name is uh, Ron Weidenbach. Um, Hawaii Fish Company is a family-owned uh, aquaculture farm on the north shore of Oahu that my wife Lita and I um, established in 1978. As Liz said, we're now um, Hawaii's oldest commercial aqua farm and have been uh, breeding, growing, selling, and promoting um, premium quality Hawaii-grown fish for more than 30 years. We're currently preparing um, to expand our farm we're finally uh, getting near the, the long uh, effort to renegotiate our lease and are looking forward to moving ahead. Um, traditionally had been a cattle raising ranch uh, for decades and we continue to do that and have developed uh, grass fed beef, which we sell locally. And um, they're continue, continuing to diversify the products available um, both the aquaculture farm that has been there was built by Aquatic Farms 30 years ago. Um, it's run for Kuloa Ranch now um, by myself and Dan Lager, who's in the, in the back and hopefully you've talked to at our booth. Um, and uh, we also have an agriculture program as of the last year or two. And so we're uh, diversifying and adding a lot of produce and fruit crops. and um, uh, am I forgetting the agriculture hashtag? Um, and uh, we also have oyster production, which has been in the news a lot lately. We're just um, very happy to be able to spearhead the effort for the statewide um, industry, hopefully, for shellfish and oysters. Bula Iaia, and I'm a, I'm a owner of uh, Makaha Aqua Farms. And I started farming. Uh, Tilapia back in um, 1997. I was part of a cooperative of farmers um, from the Waianae Coast Alternative Development Corporation who uh, went out in the community and um, taught Hawaiian families in the, in, in the community how to grow fish in their backyard. And what we did was we created a small cooperative of uh, backyard farmers and um, we jumped into the Chinatown market. Yeah. It was a tough, it was a, a tough sell back there, and yeah, um, nobody were interested in tilapia, so we 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 changed our our uh, product name to the Wainai Sunfish, and the uh, Sunfish name stuck, and um, it's a popular item in Chinatown today. When your food source changes, uh, in the restaurant business, we have to change our menu. So if you remember like three, two years ago, uh, there was a fishing ban on Opaka Paka and Onaga and the bottom fish. And so when that happens, well, what are you going to do? You got to look for another source of fish. Well, you have to look for other sources to fill out your menu. We support uh, not only the tilapia, but we support the kampachi, the moi, uh, because it gives us a, a more well-rounded thing. And we're thinking about the future. We're thinking about sustainability. And so I applaud you folks for doing this. Uh, thanks for having us. Special thanks to Alan Tsuchiyama, 
Warren Ochina and the students. You're going to see about 20 students come out here and help prepare the food for you tonight. We had a chance to check out the taste and quality of their aquaponics products and enjoyed some really Ono food prepared for us by the faculty and students at KCC. Listen to these dishes. Tilapia prepared in four ways by Alan Wong. Roasted beet salad with kale and citrus. Salad greens with chipotle barbecue dressing, honey citrus dressing, and balsamic vinaigrette. Watercress pork soup, Shanghai and bok choy with smoked bacon. Eggplant piccata with tahini arugula pesto. Cucumber, tomato, and Okinawan spinach salad with shizo ponzu vinaigrette. Fresh baked bread with arugula aioli. Dessert made fresh by KCC's pastry students. Getting hungry, it was great. I'm here representing uh, Waimanalo's Markets Co-op. We just started not too long ago, so just seeing what's out there. Uh, Olawana Gardens is in Waimanalo. There's a couple of different aquaponic farms that are in the area. There's a lot of information and a lot of connecting the dots and for, with growers and buyers. And so the more we can ex establish a good, strong industry in aquaculture, and that's going to help us become more sustainable and provide economic development in the long run. We are from the Atlantis Seafood and the Steak Restaurant in Waikiki. It's, it's challenging. Everybody's got their challenges, but everybody is up and coming. You know, and we're, we're going to see this thing explode, I think, very, very soon. I mean, if you listen to Howard, I mean, he's got 100,000, 150,000 pounds of fish coming out. You got Dan Ching over here with an acre going to be, you know, five acres pretty soon. I mean, these guys are big time, you know, so I, I think it's going to be a really, really good industry for Hawaii. And by the way, I mean, I know we lead the industry in the United States. That's pretty dang amazing for a little bitty island. Yeah, we're uh, illegally farmed, and like what Fred said, we learned from him. He's our mentor. He's everybody's mentor. We're about to expand um, and um, invest about another 1.5 million into two more acres of hydroponic grow area. And um, so, once once we're done building, we're gonna start production, and at that time, we'll be three months out from harvest. Then we'll go to people like like these and um, try to pre-sell what's coming out. It's a new and growing industry uh, and, and um, all of the guys here are, are, are jumping on the bandwagon and, and try to, we're trying to do something new in Hawaii. Yeah? I mean, I think in, in Hawaii right now, aquaponics is, um, is going to be something that Hawaii leads, leads the world in. It's my first kind of interaction with it and I think it's, it's a great way to, to meet other, to meet the, the supplier of what we are eating. Uh, I think it's extremely important to, in all food, what, know what, where it's coming from and what we're doing. Uh, and this is a way to, to turn, get us together and, and talk about it and try to figure it out, what needs to be done to, to get it into, especially my restaurant, I'm looking for it all the time. Uh, the program is awesome. Todd Lowe has uh, done a fabulous job with Liz um, having this first aquaponics uh, se session for the buyers and the uh, growers alike to, to connect. I think it's great. Yeah. These, uh Students and faculty at uh, Kapiolani Community College have been preparing this beautiful repast, and uh, Chef Wang has been supervising. It fits way up there, just like uh, your traditional fishes like mahi mahi, opaka paka, onaga, uh, your yellowfin ahi. Uh, you know, it's it's a not only a good tasting fish, a great product, very versatile, has a good fat content, so you can do many things with it. So tonight we uh, are going to grill it, we're going to saute it, we're going to steam it, and we're going to uh, put it in a tempura batter to show the versatility uh, of the tilapia. The, the problem is the size, and, and then the second bigger problem is uh, the supply. Uh, you know, we currently get it from Ron and Lita, Weidenbach out from North Shore, and he brings us only so many fish a week. And I'm okay with that because our volume is not as great as, let's say, a bigger restaurant, a chain restaurant, or a big hotel. But, you know, the point is to, to create the demand so that they can raise their supply. So, if he was to give me more tilapia, we could make it a bigger thing. Yeah, we, we hope we can turn Hawaii into um, aquaculture Silicon Valley in the future. And the technology is available to the, enable us to do so. It's possible. We don't need a lot of land, a lot of water. For our company, it's important that we hear from the farmers, that we hear from the 
people who are actually doing all the work. Um, we get as much information from their personality and their energy as we do from their product. And Oahu always gets the attention and the outside islands never get the, the attention. And you know, they're just as much farmers on the big island in Maui and Lanai. I'm from Lanai, you know, the smallest of all the islands. Well, actually, we're using uh, some of the fish already. We are using swat but we are importing from uh, Vietnam or other country. Mm -hmm. But it uh, will be uh, good to know that we can do it in Hawaii. I think the program was great. Um, for myself, I can say my personal experience, I got a chance to um, you know, just really see the, the impact that it'll make you know, by making these simple decisions. It's habits that we gotta take in, in our lives, in our daily lives, and to teach to future generations. But the impact that it makes, tremendous. Tilapia goes back a long ways. I, in fact, I was working with tilapia trying to promote it back in the early 70s when most people thought it was like an Alawai Canal kind of fish. But it's come around, although unfortunately people in Hawaii still have a bit of a prejudice against it. Uh, but it's a good tasting fish. It's a, it's a fish that doesn't taste like a fish. And most people want fish that don't taste like fish. It seems very odd, but that's the way it is. I think it's a matter of being sustainable. We live on an island, we have so many resources, we should be able to sustain ourselves instead of relying on everyone else shipping things in. The chefs here, we always like to support local. We always, they always, you know, want to go out into the farms and see all the locally, you know, they, we always have like so many places that we can like get our own greens from, you know, that we have the tilapia that like helps our ecosystem for the greens grow better. And, you know, it's just a matter of like being able to grow your own like farm you know it's a lot better than going out and reaching out to the mainland and stuff you know everything is better locally grown it's excellent it also came from my farm but that's why yeah because they wanted two pounders two pound fish and um, we supplied the two pound fish and uh, it's easier to cook you can see the fillets there's more meat huh? very mellow um, it's cooked perfectly, it's very moist, and it's not a strong flavor. And then the other one I've just tasted is the, I think, tempura battered filet. It's delicious, and I'm, I'm really surprised. It's very tender, it's like a really soft, white meat. The buyers are interested, and they're making connections with the, the operators, the farms. We still are, you know, a little bit concerned, of course, of how to match their uh, demand with our supply. You have to have that marketing edge to get out and be willing to, to interface with the business world is really the people that are going to make money. And I believe truly that you can make money in this. I'm with Garden and Valley Isle Seafood. We're a wholesaler here in, in, uh, on Oahu. And we've dealt with uh, with Wen Hao with his uh, Marine Agri Future. We, we sell his uh, sea asparagus. And so I'm just here to see what else, you know, that uh, what else our, our farmers have to offer. Everybody knows that buying more food boosts local food production, creates more jobs, builds a stronger economy, delivers fresher food to customers, and reduces the carbon use that comes with long-distance shipping of food. What's not to like about that? It's our Hawaii, and participation in buying local food shows our support of making Hawaii stronger, healthier, and more prosperous. We've got to focus on that and build local agriculture, aquaculture, and aquaponics. The Department of Agriculture hopes this conference could be the start of something big, the start of long-term successful farmer-buyer relationships that are mutually beneficial for farmers and buyers. This was the first aquaponics products conference in Hawaii. Thanks to Liz Shu and Todd Lowe and the Department of Agriculture for putting it on. We hope they do this every year and we look forward to another great conference and meal one year from now. Good for them.
And now let's take a look at our ThinkTech calendar of events going forward. ThinkTech broadcasts video and audio for all of our talk shows live on the internet from 1 to 5 p.m. every weekday afternoon. If you missed a show or you want to replay or share any show, they're all there archived for you on YouTube. Visit ThinkTechHawaii.com for our live stream and YouTube links or to join our email list and get these links and program advisories on our upcoming shows. We also invite you to be part of our live audience at our downtown studio in Pioneer Plaza. Contact me, Jay, at thinktechhawaii.com. Raise your awareness in every way on ThinkTech. And now, here's this week's ThinkTech News. Aloha, I'm Jay Fidel for ThinkTech News. How about NSA as an eavesdropping agency that commercializes technology? Yes, according to the MIT Technology Review, spinoffs have spun from the National Security Agency. This even though NSA programmers are sworn to secrecy and even barred from carrying cell phones to work. For one investor, $2 million in seed money was enough to lure five programmers from the NSA. They're working at Squirrel, S-Q-R-R-L, a company in Cambridge, Massachusetts, is selling a commercial version of the database behind NSA's eavesdropping programs. Wow, can I get that? Working at NSA is like the diametric opposite of being an entrepreneur. But there you have it. Some people cross the great divide to do tech business and make money with what they learned at NSA. Controversy surrounds NSA's secret eavesdropping programs. But in fact, the agency itself actively patents inventions and contributes to open source projects. As we know, its employees sometimes actually emerge to create their own spin-offs. Keep in mind that more than 4,000 programmers work at NSA, in addition to 960 PhDs and 1,000 mathematicians. Just like other federal agencies, NSA is required by law to try to commercialize its R&D. So it actually employs patent attorneys and has a marketing department that goes out and tries to license inventions, or at least some of them. That includes things like tamper-proof bags, secure manhole covers, and a dispersion system to be sure shredded documents can't be pieced back together. One startup, Integrata Systems, licensed a patent on how to detect intruders on wireless networks. Sounds useful, exciting, and probably very profitable. There are a variety of these spin-offs. Integrata Systems of Baltimore, Maryland, KeyW of Hanover, Maryland, 63 Systems of McLean, Virginia, Squirrel of Cambridge, Massachusetts, and Fixmo of Toronto, Ontario. Who knows where they will go? Now, how about that? Wonders never cease to amaze. Why doesn't Hawaii get in on this? We do have NSA offices here, even downtown, where Ed Snowden worked. And for that matter, why didn't Ed Snowden do this? He might be a much happier, more successful, and less wanted guy today. Jay Fidel for ThinkTech News. We'll be right back to wrap up this week's edition of ThinkTech. But first, we want to thank our underwriters. Castle & Cook, Hawaii. 160 years of investing in Hawaii 
creating communities and providing for the needs of our state. Collateral Analytics, a Hawaii-based tech company empowering the real estate industry to make better informed property investment decisions. The Foreign Trade Zone, bringing the benefits of the Foreign Trade Zone program to Hawaii businesses and entrepreneurs. Galen Ho, a senior executive of BAE Systems, a global defense, security, and aerospace company. Hawaiian Electric Company and its affiliates Maui Electric and Hawaii Electric Light Company on Hawaii Island. Hawaii Energy, your energy conservation and efficiency program, created to help Hawaii residents and businesses adopt a clean energy lifestyle. The Hawaii Energy Policy Forum, incorporating diverse perspectives into the design of a forward-looking energy strategy. Hawaii Gas, helping Hawaii achieve its transition to clean energy and a better energy future. Hawaii Pacific Health, bringing technology and teamwork together to transform healthcare in Hawaii. The High Tech Development Corporation, the state's leading technology agency. The Scheidler Family Foundation, supporting many educational, cultural, and charitable organizations, including ThinkTech. Okay, that wraps up this week's edition of ThinkTech. Remember, you can watch ThinkTech on OC16 several times every week. Can't get enough of it, just like Duko Ishii and Maria Kashem do. For lots more ThinkTech videos and for underwriting opportunities on ThinkTech on OC16, visit thinktechhawaii.com. Be a guest or volunteer, a producer or a studio intern, and help us reach Hawaii. I'm Jay Fidel. Thanks so much for joining us on ThinkTech. You can watch this show throughout the week and tune in next Sunday evening for our next important weekly episode. Aloha, everyone.